So, how was Tuesday? I'm glad it's over. Not that good. Good. At least one of us had a decent day. Faye is currently um, attempting not to drown from trying to inhale tea or coffee or whatever it was. So, if anybody's curious as to where tea, uh, Faye is, that's... Yeah. Um, who's ready? Hi. Me. I'm just doing organization. I'm alive. How about that? That's the important part. <clears throat> yeah. <sighs> Coffee, by the way, not tea. I wasn't 100% sure as to exactly what it was. No, I've got like a cappuccino mix I've been drinking lately. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, it was just one of those things that I was like, I don't know which one it is. So I'm just going to say both. No, yeah, that's fine. I'm just glad I can breathe again. Good. As per usual, when that happens, my nose was running a mile a minute. So that was fun, too. <clears throat> Gotta love it when it sprouts legs. Right? Hi, stream. I missed it when we went live because I was, you know, attempting, unable to talk. Yeah, attempting to clear your hair, airways of liquid. Yeah, well, you know, just waiting for the chance to become Aqua Woman. I don't know. I'm sure there's somebody can canonically in one of the universes that you could give yourself a parallel to, but I don't know. I don't know <clears> secondary <throat> characters like that that well. Especially aquatic ones. Yeah. Oh, I don't know anything funny. about these so I can't help. Not the most well-versed in superheroes and comics and such but my immediate <clears throat> first thought was of uh god what was i think he was called darwin the one that could adapt to like anything yeah i mean that's fair there's yeah, that really cool mutant that died the stupidest stuff yeah I was really like, annoyed about it yeah i mean first class was a pretty decent movie i thought but i don't know if he's in the comics Yes, he is. He is. Okay. I do know that much. X-Men wasn't a comic series I got huge into. <clears throat> X-Men was more my Saturday morning cartoons. <laughs> That's fair. I mean... Let's be honest here, growing up, that was probably the best cartoon. Yes. Followed very closely by Batman. I didn't watch Batman. At the time, it was really good. Now, it's watchable. Yeah, I didn't watch the Batman stuff. If for nothing else, if you're ever bored... Mark Hamill voices the Joker. So. Oh, I know. I've watched some of them now, but back then, I didn't. Yeah. <clears throat> that, that's what makes it watchable. I've watched some of the movies, and they were pretty good. I don't remember which one I liked the most. But it was one that came out in, like, 2005 or something like that. Offhand, I don't remember which one comes out when. Yeah, it was early 2000s at some point, I think. Was it the live action version? No, no, it was the cartoons. Right. Yeah, there's a bunch of them. 
But yeah. No, the live actions, they're... Yeah. Some are better than others, let's put it that way. Yeah. So, um... Wyoming. Wyoming. You may ask yourself, what in the hell's in Wyoming? Good question. I have no idea. And that's why we're going the route we're going. So, I am ready when you three are. Right. Let's do this. It's ironic. I gave Gladys the smallest binder, and yet she's the one I take the most notes for. Oh, it usually goes. Yeah, I'm actually going to have to switch to a new one soon. Can't even say, like, move Tori into it, because you take a lot of notes there, and Layla's going to uh, Actually, I really don't. The problem, okay, the problem with Tori is, is that I get way too into the game and just forget to take notes. Fair. Um, Layla, I've been taking notes on because I have a chance to kind of step away from being the face with chance there. You're welcome. So. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway. I just... I get way too into Tori. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Um, so, <clears throat> welcome back. Uh, this is Nichols Cryptid Catchers, our Hunter the Reckoning um, Chronicle. I am Dangle, your storyteller. Joining me is Faye Buttons and Men. Hey. Hi. Good evening. Yes, I want to do it all at once. See what all at once. See what happened. You three. Hi. Responded I actually fairly. Yeah, it responded fairly <laughs> fairly decently. Um, this, since this is World of Darkness, I don't think this one particularly is going to have any like trigger warnings. However, if you do encounter something, or if we encounter something that you personally don't like, please take a step back. And proceed when and if you're able to. Um, so I'm going to kind of just jump right into it. What happened last time? We found a werewolf. Which werewolf? One that we have seen in Detroit. In our Blood and Oak Detroit game. Same as Unsa. Yes. And he's he's uh, one of the domain holders of pets. Yes. Poor, poor Vincent. <laughs> oh, don't poor Vincent. No, no, no. All I mean, I'm considered. sure he's an absolute asshole as well, but still, being tied to cat like that? Ugh. All things considered, Vincent's actually sitting in a fairly decent position. So, don't poor Vincent. Um, and then we also had to stay in the hospital. Because some people got really messed up. Yeah. Yep. Um, others less so than, but it's fine. We lived. Yeah, everybody lived. There was only a little bit of lasting problems there. I'm sure you'll probably never quite look at dogs the same. Eyes. Um. But yeah. And then as you were leaving, you got to get some spoilers about another character. 
also in Detroit. So that was fun. Not that big of a deal, though. I can take care of that later. Um, so, yeah, we are good to go on this one. Is there anything that anybody wants to bring up? Um, between games. How much time skip are we having? We will get to that in just a minute, but it is going to be enough to where Edgar fully heals. Yeah, that was my question. Yeah. Because Edgar is quite hurt. And I don't think that Rose and Gladys would just gallivant off in the middle of nowhere without. Buttons, you're freaking out. What? Oh, no. Is it just on my end? Yeah, I I don't see anything. I'm. Yeah. Everything's normal on my end. You're fine on Discord, but you're freaking out on Twitch. Oh no, you're freaking out on my Discord. I don't... Odd, but... Ah, how do I go back? I don't know. Yeah, no, you're freaking the hell out. Oh my god. Ah! Good lord. Like, think some eldritch glitching going on here. Oh no, do I need to... Maybe? I don't know. Because no one else is doing it on my end, it's just you. Uh, yeah. Let me... Right, okay, let me turn off my camera and turn it back on and see if that... Start with that. So, stand by for... um This. You'll see two of me for a moment. We'll go ahead and crack in for now. There we go. Has it stopped? No more freak okay. out. No, it was like some eldritch being took over our channel for a second. I have no idea. <clears throat> Excuse me. I have no idea what that was. All right. So, um... Back to our regularly scheduled programming, because that was fun. Um, <clears throat> how much damage did Edgar take? He took full aggro and uh, spent a couple days in the hospital. And now he's just kind of healing up six. on his own. You've got six aggravated, right? Yeah, five aggravated. Didn't remember exactly how many health boxes you had. So it'll be the better part of two months for downtime um, to allow everything to fully heal. Since you didn't have any, like, I don't know, broken bones. Should be fine. You just got messed up a little bit. Just some minor lacerations. Yeah, something like that. So, um, you have two months. What would everybody want to do in those two months? Lattice would spend some time with Eugene, I think. Running some whatever experiments they've got going on. And then I had purchased the specialty in firearms, so she's working on that too. And honing in her stuff a bit more. Yes. Like things she has made. Yeah. So not going to actually have you roll anything. Just mark that down. 
which I'm sure you probably already have. I've spent two months experimenting. I'll let you know when you need to make a roll for things. Rose and Edgar. What have they been doing for roughly two months? Edgar would have been doing some... Spending some time in Rose's library trying to brush up more on the um, stuff he's not fully versed in as much as Glass and Rose. Yeah, so the supernatural. Yep. Okay. So yeah, that again, not gonna actually make you have make a roll. However, the next time you run into anything vampire related, you can add one die. That is a temporary specialty. We'll tell you it's not going to be this particular mini arc. We'd also spend a little more time with the dog, uh, teach her how to search and all that. Okay. At this point, it's pretty well trained to be like a guard dog. Um, might not necessarily be like a war dog, but it can probably handle its own against soft targets. Um, it's also not necessarily like a full-on like search dog, but it's it's pretty decent. So, um, is there anything else that you would like to spend your time doing? Nope. Okay. And then Rose. Rose, um, Rose is going to continue working on the library, and she'd probably tap Ed, uh, Edgar to assist, because uh, uh, she is going to invest in the, um, in the where they hide perk, which will give us a little bit of a background on some, uh, on how to locate hideouts and places of residence where supernatural things lurk. Okay. So you do that and you brush up because you kind of knew some of them, but you certainly brush up on what to look for and certain specific signs. Um, is there anything else that doesn't necessarily have to do with purchased items that anybody wants to cover that they've done for the last two months. I'm going to go over the new ordinance with uh, Gladys, see if uh, anything she would like to use, try to capture something alive. She would be very interested in trying to capture something alive. Something on the supernatural end of things. Um, and then, yeah, probably would work with Edgar to figure out how the best ways to go about doing that would be. So, between research and just general application that you know, best ways would be to stick them in the chest with a piece of wood. And then throw them in a bag. As right. far as like vampire side, um, wolf side, you do get a little bit of assistance with from Gareth saying that silvered chains typically help. As far as fake creatures. You can't really find anybody that's an expert. That's fine. That's not what Gladys is super interested in. Um, she would work with Edgar to see if she can figure out a way to make like a legitimate 
high powered uh staker um you might need smoky on that too that's fine we'll pull him in so what i'm gonna have everyone do um is edgar roll wits and firearms That's three. So, Gladys, you get five extra die for intelligence and craft. And this is to make a weapon, so you do get that as well. I know that is quite a large pool for you. I had to tap into the vampire dice for this one. Yeah, like I said, I know it's Quite a large pool, so. Really okay? Yeah, I was trying to get him to either go inside of the jacket or go up. Because I couldn't hold him the entire time. I said, that's awful. Can I re-roll? Um, you can use willpower. Would it take away what I have? It would take away from what I have from this game? No. You can re-roll it once. That's fine. Three die. So thank God. Eight with a crit. Okay. So you have a semi functional <laughs> long distance staker. Um, it does not fully work yet, but effectively it is a breech load single shot rifle. Um just trying to figure out how to Get the projectile out of the barrel without it splintering. Yeah. Smokey so, has an idea. Okay, so it's not fully finished being developed yet, is what you're saying. Correct. Okay. AKA, you don't need it right now, so it's yeah. fine. One less thing for Gladys to carry around. But, um, above table, I'll have Smokey roam between games and finish up the cartridge. Cool. That's actually really exciting. Because it's a lot. So, yeah. We'll import some hardwood if we have to. You're going to have to. <laughs> So, um, yeah, is there anything that Rose would like to do that isn't necessarily a mechanical thing, more of a RP thing, or even a I make things thing? Um, not particularly. Okay. So, we will move on to our next little portion. Um... So like I said, two months goes by and some jobs come in. Some of which you have to turn down. Some of which you don't, but they're local, so you can take care of. So you do have some money coming in, come going out. Um, the jobs that are local that you get are fairly mundane. They're still private investigator jobs. Um, it's unfortunate, too, because you find one of the local politicians is corrupt and embezzling from local taxes. 
you give the report, and then magically the person you gave the report to disappears. Don't know how that happened, though. Um, the mystery to everyone. Yeah. And it's a normal day. And by this point, it's getting muggy. It's not hot, but it's getting muggy. Late spring by this point. Uh, and a person comes by the shop. You see them pull up and it's not brand new, but it's definitely a uh, truck. Looks like it might be outfitted for wilderness use. Can't come in. Then from the office. Um. Can I get you three to come in here? Okay. Going on. Sure. A uh, special job, not like them special job, but it's one of the search and rescue type deals. Okay. What's and the catch. Um, it's across the country. It's odd. Um, yeah, they said they'll explain a little bit more, but you're just local to what they're looking for, so. Okay. So, I assume everybody trudges in? Yes. Yep. So, as you come in, it's the man that's standing in front of you is probably 62, 63, 64 years old. So definitely on the older side. Um, dressed like an academic. He kind of looks like, well, that's not quite exactly what I was expecting to see, but um, my name's Dr. Luther. I, uh, part of the uh, college up in Knoxville, you see. Um, some of my uh, students' aides and interns that I had go do some research for me. Supposed to check in about a week ago, and they ain't checked in. Understand where they're at. Might be a little bit uh, difficult to do so, but usually it's a day late, two days late, never a week. I was wondering if I could inch us interest y'all in the job. Not deep in the woods as they go. Well, that's the thing. It's not really woods. It's open prairie. There's some plateaus and such here and there. It's in Wyoming, you see. Oh. They're looking for the uh, northwestern Ray Rabbit, or hopefully one day it'll be called Luther's Rabbit. See, it's something that I've been tracking for a while and just haven't quite got evidence that it actually exists and it's unique yet. Unique how? Well, a couple different th reasons, or a couple different things. First and foremost, it's three times the size of the normal rabbit we got around here. So it's it's quite large. Size of a medium-sized dog. It also isn't necessarily fully, uh, well, it's omnivorous. Or at least that's my theory, as it goes. Hmm. 
Definitely unique. Exactly. Um. So I was wondering, and this is obviously a bit odd. Um, would y'all like to at least assist the few members of my team that we've got um, that are going out of there to try to find them? Um, I am willing to pay for travel. I'm willing to pay for your time. I'm willing to pay for your food. I ain't got to really worry about room out there. But if you need any camping gear, I'll be more than happy to pay for that as well. How many people are in the group that went missing and how many other people are in the group that we will be going with? Well, there's ten that seem to have lost their way. Um, as far as who's going to be going with y'all, it's only two. It's uh, our most recent doctorate as well as I believe you know him. Eugene, next door. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't know he was going. Well, I had contacted him about the issue, and he said, I, I know people. He highly recommends y'all. The wilderness isn't my specialty, but I wouldn't mind going. Those two are better at it. He said, I assume you're Gladys. Yes. That you are resourceful and handy in a pinch. Yep. So that's why you're also invited. In case if y'all get into a pinch, hopefully somebody can figure out how to get y'all out. So. Does all that sound reasonably okay to y'all? Sounds reasonable to me. Sounds fine to me. Have they reported issue? Have any teams reported issues in the past? I'm sure this isn't their first excursion out there. Well, I'm not 100% sure as to exactly what's going on right now, but the only times that we've had extended delays in checking in weather related um so they might have got a freak monsoon or something freak rain maybe a mudslide this kind of cut off the way back who knows shouldn't be too big of a deal and if they check in by the time y'all get to where you're going I'll let y'all know um but as it sits right now like I said they're a week behind been a week and a half seeing as these are still students we would like to ensure their uh, safety I don't think anything ill befell of them but you know you could always be wrong I just like to try to be optimistic Anything can go wrong out there. It's not exactly the city or anything. Well, no, but outside of your errant coyote or wolf or bear, ain't a whole lot out there that's going to try to attack a group of people. When are the others going to be ready to leave by? Well, Eugene said he's packing right now. Brandy's he's already ready to go. He wanted to go before, but see, he's recently uh, had to be sidelined due to, due to injury. He's fully healed now. They've been out there for about a month. 
And they've been doing fine. It's just... I don't know. Was he injured in relation to this? No, no, no. Uh, he was injured in relation to it. Sports. Okay. Plays football. Well, played football. He ain't playing no more. Should we be prepared to fly out there, or, or are we driving? Uh, we can fly out there, but you still gonna have to get in the car and drive because ain't no, ain't no airports around where you're going. I wasn't sure the level of expediency needed. It is about comfort for y'all right now. Obviously, we'd like to have you there as soon as possible, but I understand that not everybody likes to get into an airplane. If y'all are comfortable with doing that, I will absolutely put you on one. I have no issues with it. You can take less supplies that way. Like I said, I'll I'll pay for whatever supplies y'all need. I'll have them make for you when you get out there. I don't mind. Well, let it settle. I will be buying y'all plane tickets and you leave tomorrow then. Or at least that's what I'm going to try to go for. Okay. I do very much appreciate it and I will talk with y'all's sec secretary to uh, figure out whatever price y'all want. Okay. Thank you very much. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. And he kind of goes off into a side room with Evelyn. And she starts kind of writing out a contract and all that fun stuff. So that gives you all about 16 hours to get ready and sleep. So what all would you all like to bring? Beyond your normal gear, which are firearms and trinkets. I don't know. We're going to have the camp the stuff out there. We're going to have supplies out there. What'd you say now? We're bringing the dog this time. Okay. You can, we can make that work. I'm sure Gladys is going to love that. Oh, I guess we should leave the Molotovs behind this game. Probably. I mean, <laughs> don't really no. want to start a, don't really want to start a prairie fire when we're stranded out in God forsaking nowhere looking for people. Right, that was my thought. So yeah, we'll leave all 15 Molotovs behind. <laughs> uh, that's great. The semi-preps Molotovs. Um, make sure we... <laughs> I know Rose is going to make sure she packs her weather a, uh, a weatherproof coat, jacket, thing, covering, at the very least. Yeah, I mean, pack for the weather that we should expect out there. Speaking of, does anybody actually know what the weather is in late spring in Wyoming? Wet and I would windy. assume wet. Okay. Wet, muddy, and occasionally really cold. Okay. We're going to go with that. That's what you pack for? Yes. Okay. I mean, I 
personally don't know that's just my guess i'm sure we would do research before that yeah is there a way we can find out well seeing as wyoming hasn't really wasn't researched a whole hell of a lot um that that's actually fairly accurate so you're lucky at least you didn't say dry and hot well i mean it's spring it's pretty much wet everywhere yeah. also farther north than people expect yeah so yeah. like up here springtime gets cold yes yeah. so um yeah you all pack for that you grab your normal stuff you somehow get the dog on the plane or anything else that anybody would like to bring. Random grag bag of shit. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't think anything super special. Uh, Rose is going to make sure she brings a blank journal and a writing utensil that won't go if it gets wet. Okay. So, yeah. You, um, you head out and you fly into the one airport in Wyoming, which is Boulder. And as you touch down, you can see that it is a teeny tiny town. Teeny tiny airport. There ain't nothing around. You disembark and um, you disembark and you um, are going through getting your stuff, getting your dog, getting your everything. And there is this very, very small, rather old, white haired woman standing there with a sign that just says Luther. She's one person. There's nobody else. She's just kind of standing there waiting for somebody to show up. And there was a total of seven of you on the flight. The other four have dispersed. Walk up to her. Are you the professor's hired hand? Yep. That would be us. Oh, good. I have the truck outside. And she kind of turns starts walking, but it's more of like a hobble. Like her hands are shaking the entire way. And she gets to the front door well after you three do. And you probably just stand there, stare at her for a couple minutes before you actually follow. Are you okay? Just old. Okay. Um, and when she gets to the truck, she opens it up and it's, it's old, it's rusty. You might be able to Fred Flintstone it. She jumps in the driver's seat. Come on, get in. Daylight's burning. Okay. Hop in. Jump in the back with the dog. Oh boy, Rose, Gladys is up front. Yeah, Ro Rose will probably sit with the dog sandwiched between her and Edgar in the back. Boy. So, everybody's been around an old diesel truck before, right? Yep. That doesn't ever want to start? Yep. So it sits there for like three minutes as she's just sitting there doing it. 
She's like, oh, yeah, that's right. She, like, hits a button on the inside. And it goes, Vroom. I forgot the ether. Are you okay to drive? I can still see. Then she puts it in gear and takes off. And she literally pulls out of the parking lot, drives about 300 feet, and stuff pulls into this little tiny building. Um, it kind of looks like a hardware store. Like, we're here. She pulls out a gear, puts the parking brake on, works her way out of As you go inside, Eugene and the rather young man is standing in there. He is six foot six and probably three hundred and twenty pounds. Hi, hey, Eugene. Hi, Eugene. Hey, I uh, I got here yesterday. Yeah, wanted to get out here. Sooner rather than later, and make sure we got everything. I've already took taking the inventory. Um, I hope Julia didn't scare you too much uh, with her driving. It wasn't a long trip. No, I'm pretty sure you probably could have walked it back, but it's fine. Who's your friend? And he just kind of looks down at all of you. I'm I'm Jake Alright Yeah, he's a Really smart kid Actually Don't let his size fool you or intimidate you He's Yeah Not bad You coming with us? Oh yeah Professor said, uh, I was to observe only, but it's not really what I do. <laughs> what is it you Hi, like I'm to Gladys, do? and what do you do? Um, well, I intend on being a uh, zoologist when I graduate, but I understand that's not in super high demand, so probably veterinary science um, a couple of years nice to meet you three I've, Eugene's actually talked pretty good about you Rose grins just a big wide grin yeah so um, like I said we got all the stuff we got enough food for about three weeks for all of us, so fine there. Um, got a, a few tents. We're gonna have to share a little bit, but it's fine. We've got enough bags for everyone. Um, is there anything that I'm not taking into account that y'all think we need? I don't think so. I'm pretty sure we looked into everything that we need. Okay, good. The one thing I didn't take into account, though, is you taking the dog. So I'll... Do you dry food, or can you feed him fresh? I alternate just to, just in case I have to switch. Okay. Probably it'll be should be fine probably be easier to just feed them fresh out there. There's, there's plenty of stuff out there to harvest and feed the dog with. And really us too. It's something that you want to do. Um, and so he rolls out a map and he's like, so we are here. And he kind of circles where you guys are. He's like, and where we're going is about 350 miles to the northwest. 
Um, it's kind of out in the middle of nowhere, but that's... Yeah. Um, the I mean, closest... at this point, I just kind of expect it. Yeah, it's not that big a deal. Should be relatively safe. Relatively. Um, worst we gotta worry about out there is a ghost town. There was an old silver mine up there, but it's it's been abandoned for about 40 years now, I think. Is what they said. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's Apparently they were looking for, like, rabbits or some shit. I don't know. Is there anything about the area that we need to know? Um. It is prone to flooding. So we think that might have been what happened. Uh, and if, like, everything washed out, they didn't know how to get back. That would kind of make sense. They did have a guide, but we know how that can go sometimes. Right. Guys can get mixed up, and if nobody else really knows the area, then it is what it is. How are uh, they expected to contact everyone? Well, they uh, there's a a jail about 75 miles from where their base camp was supposed to be. It's at a old ranger station um, that has a phone that they would call in. I haven't checked in. It's actually the Wyoming State Penitentiary. So so it's still in use? Yeah, that's kind of where they send everybody. There's not a really big population here. So, yeah. You don't think there was an issue at the jail that might have caused a delay in communication? No, they. we've already called the jail. We've already checked in there. Actually, the warden came down and said everything was good. So, um, supposed to be good to go. We just have to figure out what went on. Hopefully they're fine. Hopefully nobody's hurt. Hopefully we're not going to be like calling up moms and dads after this. Um, but yeah. So in theory, they never made it to the jail. From this last check-in. Yeah. Which it's an access road that they did say that had quite a bit of rain. Warden said that he drove it personally. Um, went to the ranger station. Said it didn't look like anybody was there for about a week and a half when he was there. But that was yesterday. Um, well, technically two days ago he stayed overnight at the ranger station and drove here from there. So, that's kind of where we're at shouldn't be too big of a deal get in figure out what's going on get out any questions no. i don't believe so all right um so i've got some options and this is completely up to you i can either when we get to the ranger station i can stay at the ranger station in case they come back or i can go with you I'm going to let Jake here go with you either way. Just figure it probably wouldn't hurt to have somebody at the ranger station in case. Might not be the worst idea. Especially if something happens to us while we're out there too. Then that's kind of what I was thinking. Uh, yeah, I think we should make that our central base while we search I say I'll stay there if you don't check in five days six days uh, sounds good then I will call for more backup and then we'll get like an actual legitimate search team right now they just can't justify it where were they supposed to... So here was the thing. Where were they actually, like, supposed to be checking for this rabbit? Well, it's kind of in a radius, and he kind of 
takes the caliper and like, draws it on the map. He's like, kind of in this general area. Um, last known, they were in the uh, northern sector. They had like quadrants and all that fun stuff, which the quadrant they gave me wasn't actually in the northern part, so we're going to start in the northern part, and then we'll go to the quadrant that they said. Because um, quadrant D, which is southeast, but they're saying in the northernmost area, so it's odd. Um, yeah, so I think somebody got mixed up, and they got turned around. That's honestly what I think. Okay. So, um, yeah, I'll get our truck. We're not taking that one. And we can head out whenever you three are ready. They have a really good sandwich shop down the street. Yeah, I would like to eat, and then we should probably head out. Okay. Sounds, sounds like a plan. So, sandwiches? Sandwiches. That's yep. like the only thing our characters eat, apparently. <laughs> it, it's a joke at this point for me. So um, this is the only game we have where we can eat. <laughs> yeah. But. So you go get something to eat. It's not actually just sandwiches, obviously. Um, you get back and. You actually have relatively new truck. Wait, Nanya, you actually have two of them. So you don't have to be crammed. So who would like to drive? A girl will take it. Who would like to drive the other one? I can. Okay. So. Who has the best survival? Not me. I have two in survival. So is all good. Okay, so. Rose. If you would please, intelligence or wits, whatever is higher for you in survival. Okay. That put me out of five pool. Just because you have four intelligence. Yep. Uh, gonna burn a willpower to reroll that. Ooh, okay. already. So we're, we're starting out right? <laughs> Ah, five on a crit. There we go. Okay. So, it takes you a while, but it was going to take you a while anyway. Uh, but you do eventually make it out to this ranger station. Along the way, there's a couple gas stations that you can stop and you fill up and you get random supplementary, supplementary items. Um, and yeah, you show up at the ranger station, it's dark. No electricity, but it's also dark. It's actually dark outside. You head inside and it's sparsely furnished. A couple bunk beds. There's a couch, there's a table, and there's a random mattress that apparently you can like throw on top of the table if you need to. And there's a stove, there's a fireplace, a stack of wood. And Eugene immediately lights fire. And like, well, I guess I'll probably get some rest. I'll stay up a little bit and make sure that we have breakfast ready. Um, that way you guys can kind of like grab and go as you need and uh, 
just if plans change let me know as you can because I understand you can't always let me know so sound good yep <clears throat> right. glad I just will stay up for a little bit and help him prep for breakfast but not stay up too late so he uh he basically just like cuts up potatoes and like starts making some sort of dough then he puts an alarm clock on <laughs> finds an alarm clock and like I'll wake wake up when I need to finish it okay um, and with Gladys's help it's probably actually going taste fairly decent She'll just pull random spices out of her bag from somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you get rest and in the morning. He has potatoes and cinnamon rolls and some sausage. Not the biggest breakfast in the world, but it'll stick to you. And you'll you eat and you head out. Now... Do you want to take the truck or no? Or one of the trucks. What's the ground looking like? It is certainly muddy, but it's not slippery muddy. Not sure. gonna, like, truck's gonna get caught in a pit muddy? Not that you can see right now. That might change in a couple miles in, but right here, here by the uh, actual roads coming in and out, doesn't look too bad. I say we take one for at least a few miles out. Probably at least a good idea to have some sort of shelter. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Don't push it, but take it to work until it gets uncomfortable driving. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's see how long it gets to or takes to get uncomfortable. <laughs> Whoever is driving, a composure and drive. Please. Oh, I lied. That's a three. Uh, four for Edgar. I have nothing in drive, so. Oh, it's Edgar. I've all Volunteer Edgar again. I volunteer. Yeah, I do. Uh, two. You actually make it a couple hours before it gets a little bit too wet for your liking, and <clears throat> that's probably good. Let's stop here because it was. You get out and like. Even your shoes start to slip a little bit in the mud. And it's fairly obvious that, yeah, if you would have went too much further, you wouldn't have caught back out. Not anytime soon, at least. Can we um, roughly mark this spot on the map? Yeah. And you proceed on in. Now, can I please... Get everyone to roll me wits and investigation. Specifically, not intelligence for a reason. That's fine. One. Four. Seven with a crit. Seven with a crit. I only didn't roll one crit or one success. Nice. Well, that's uh, pretty good. So we oh, got... The best roll I've had all game, other than my one in the beginning of this. This concerns me. I've rolled really well so far. Yeah, that's concerning. Um, so. As you kind of fan out and you're searching the area, 
which it's pretty open. There are patches of trees here and there, but it's pretty open. No obvious signs of flooding or mudslides or landslides or... Wild packs of anything. No boars. No boars, no elk, no small herd of buffalo. No nothing like that. And as you're kind of searching, Gladys, you actually come across a tire track. And you honestly would have missed it if you didn't step into it. Okay. I found something! What'd you find? Bricks. What kind? Come see! Can she figure out where they're... what direction they're going? You don't have to. Oops. Big Jake comes walking over and like, What the hell? I don't know. Team had those. Those what? If you look, they're uh, they look like small tractor tires. Just small off-road vehicle. Um, but if you look, they tell you which way they're going just by the, the way the uh, treads pointing. Oh, well, hey. It's a uh, something they well Grandpa used to want to get for the farm for feeding the pigs and mm-hmm. cows and such. Like a miniature jeep? Uh kinda Kind of hard to explain. It's like a tractor that sits multiple people. Okay. Some people put yeah, some people put uh, like treads on the back, like snowwheel tracks, depending on exactly what you're using them for. Depends on. Yeah. Now, had I realized I had these. I wouldn't have stayed. But then again, I'd be in the same kind of situation. Anyway, um, they head that way. And it kind of points, and you can see they're heading toward. It is a mountain range. Not a very big mountain range. It's not super far away. It would probably take us the rest of the day to get there. As long as we can keep following these, we should be fine. Well, they stood out pretty well right here. At least to me. So. Yeah, let's hope it doesn't get super hard over there. It's really hard to see these. Yeah. Can you follow it for a little bit? Can I get Woods and Survival? If anybody has a specialization in track, you can absolutely can use that. Five. Two. Four. Okay, so Rose. You and Jake apparently do a fairly decent job tag teaming it. And there are a couple places where it kind of disappears on you, but you pick it up pretty quick. And sure enough, you follow it all the way to the base of this mountain. And it's taking you the entirety of the day. The thing that confuses me, though, is these are relatively fresh, right? Seems that way. So, 
Why are they checking in? Maybe it's not them? True, but we didn't think it'd be lived up here. Maybe we'll find some wild mountain man. <laughs> I mean, normally I'd say let's hope. Because that'd be my kinfolk, but um, out here Why I'm not, not get sure. shot. Yeah, out here I'm not sure I want to. Also, you're saying like we're saying that like we haven't done that already. Yeah, I don't want to have to happen again. What do you mean again? We've run into some very interesting people in our work, including was interesting. A couple different variations of mountain man. Good to know. So y'all are just walking troubles when I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> That's why they hired us. Oh, well. That makes me feel good. It should. Because you if know what? A... We're still around, even despite all the trouble. Yeah, that is that is true. If it's any consolation, you'll probably have a good chance of getting away while we make a distraction for whatever trouble happens to find us. Do you see how big I am? They will see me. Right, and yet they still like going after me for some reason, so you know. Yeah, it's because you look unassuming. Though. You are not. So you look like an easy target. Yeah, when I don't have tools on me. See, people don't tend to mess with me because apparently I'm imposing and I'm scary. I'm... All I want to do is just give you a big old hug and kind of throw you about 10 15 feet it's fine that sounds fun actually yeah that's why i was the lineman not anymore though so it's fine um i uh got hit in the head a little bit too hard they said well, i'm not I did... allowed to play anymore i didn't want to ask if it was like muscle or something that we needed to watch out for. No, no. It's... Apparently you have too many concussions and can tell you to stop. That's not a good thing. That's fine. I'll deal with that one later. So just need to make later sure you don't get life. cracked over the head. Got it. But yeah. Than that. But yeah, no, it's a uh... Too big of a deal. Protect my head and we're good to go. Thought that was what the helmet was for, but apparently not. You need better ones then. Yeah. Maybe put some more padding on the inside. Maybe one day, but not right now. Too many coaches still saying, well, back in my day, we had leather helmets. Yeah, y'all also had a lot of concussions. Y'all messed up now so um anyway let's make camp let's get everything set up and we'll, we'll head out in the morning yeah. we should probably however do some like watches throughout the night mm -hmm. makes sense I can take last one. I can get breakfast ready. Okay. I tend to wake up at some point during the middle of the night anyway, so I'll take third. I'll take first. And I'll take second. Alright. So. And I, it's been a while since we did this, hasn't it? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... Wits and awareness, please. Sure. Then, then first. Mm -hmm. Four. Okay. Your particular watch. Quiet. Nothing to report. 
Um, there's some birds that kind of go rustling through some nearby brush, but doesn't really bother you. It's not like you haven't heard bigger than that in the middle of the night before, right? Rose. When Rose gets up to do her watch, she is also going to pop on Sensi and Natural, just to make sure nothing tries to creep up on them in the dark. Okay. Go ahead and give me that roll as well. Okay. So, for the Sense the Unnatural, that is going to be four on a crit. Okay. Doesn't come up with anything? Okay. And then the straight wits and awareness is three, four, five. Okay. So during yours, toward the end, you think up on a ridge, you might have seen something. You pull your rifle up, take a look at it. And when you look at it, it's like it's just a rock. It's like it's a rock and Maybe a bush. Certainly not a person. Certainly not a medium-sized dog rabbit thing. Maybe it was just something trick of the eye, trick of the mind. It's quiet out here. It's real quiet. And the moon's not particularly bright. It's not dark, but it's not bright. Mm. Jake wakes up and takes over gift from you. And then Gladys. Yep. It is your turn to give me that roll, please. I rolled a one. Oh, well, that's... You're very, very vested in making food. And for the limited supply you have, as far as ingredients, uh, you do the best you can with it. You get some local... Um, local plant life that you can add in there. Find some edible mushrooms. So... The, all in all, is actually the fairly normal decent. kind, or is they're gonna mess us up? Kind, no, normal kind. <laughs> um, cook those up and good to go. A fairly decent breakfast. Mushroom and potato bake, or not bake, but you know, fry. Uh, mushroom and rice and beans mainly. Okay. Wake up the next morning and so anybody see anything throughout the night? Nothing weird on my end. Nope. I was sworn I saw something, but I guess it wasn't much of anything in the end. I don't know. I'm not used to being in such wide open spaces. Usually I'm in cities or forests. Well, where'd you see it? We'll go check that out first. Um, thought it thought I noticed something moving up on that ledge over there, and she'll point to where she thought she saw something. Well, if y'all fancy some climbing? We'll head up there. Not exactly, but whatever. Doesn't look too bad. Not like we gotta break out the ropes and climbing stuff. So who all is going up there? Roses. Okay. 
Flattus will stay with the dog. Okay. So, Rose and Edgar and Jake. Can I get Wits and Survival? Yep, he did good. <laughs> Two. Three. Okay. You don't see anything. It's fairly hard pack earth up here. And what isn't hard pack earth has been washed out. Well, I don't see anything. It's not necessary to say that nothing was up here. It could have just been like nothing a dog. Through, yeah. Or, yeah. Something stupid. Um, let's head back down. Let's see if we can find those tracks again. <clears throat> follow them as far as we can. While we're up on that ledge, can I see anything from the vantage point that I couldn't see down when I was down lower? That would be... Would you rather roll wits and awareness or intelligence and investigation? Uh, wits and awareness is a better pool for me. Go so do that then. I girl will get ready to do this. Okay. Go for it. Five. Also five. Okay. So you don't even have to go down. You actually see where the tracks looks like somebody's been in and out quite a few times there's actually a rut going up the side it's a couple hundred feet away but it's noticeable enough you can kind of see the very clear and if a vehicle can go up it people should be able to right that's the hope you guys see that rut over there right yeah, I see that. Wasn't looking, but I'll just take your word for it. Might be our way up. Let's get down there, let the us know, and get the dog and get going. Sounds good. So you climb back down. Getting down is a lot harder than getting up. Um. But eventually you do make it back down to Gladys and getting cleaned up, you're getting last of the stuff packed up. And the dog is very appreciative of the leftover breakfast. Um, so yeah, you have your stuff packed up and ready to go. How would you like to proceed? Up, I guess. All in the tracks. Okay. That's all I need to hear. Just wanted to make sure you weren't like, let's go the different way. Yes, let's. Let's go find that ghost town. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So you head well, back up. to the truck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, you head up the side of this mountain, following the tracks up, and it's kind of windy. It's not the easiest going, but it's certainly better than the alternative. Because there are points where it's actually legitimately hard for you to get up. So getting a vehicle up there, you gotta know what you're doing. Which kind of leads you to believe it's potentially not your search team or your <laughs> research team. But eventually you crest over the mountain. You are open, overlooking this very clear, pristine, deep blue, small lake. <clears throat> wooded area all the way around it. And basically, well, hell. <laughs> That's something. Certainly wow. Something, isn't it? Now, it's for the track itself. Now, can I get everybody to roll me either with an awareness or intelligence investigation? Please? 
I will not be rolling it because he does not actually have that great of a pool for it. Okay, that's a lot. True. Um, wits and awareness or intelligence and what? Investigation. That's eight on a crit. Five. Okay. So, and Edgar at two, right? Yep. Okay, I want to make sure I had that right in the head. Um, so, Edgar, you are kind of more worried about what's going around on around you and actually taking in the view because it's been a while since you've seen something like this. Gladys, you're appreciative. However, it's not your main concern. Um, you notice that there's a small town not too far off Lakeside. Looks like it's made of all wooden buildings, but it's there. And Rose, you notice that as well. However, you also notice and it's real faint, and it's kind of messed up. Some tracks going up the side of the mountain into this little black hole. It would seem that you have found the way to the ghost town. You had to make a joke about it, Buttons. Well, the tracks go down, too, so... Yeah, but this is kind of obviously not the search party doing this. Do we want to continue following this? At the very least, maybe it's someone who's seen them and knows where they are. Or someone who might be the reason for their disappearance and we need to mount a rescue while we're here. You two are the more wilderness as experts than me, so I'll defer to you two. Well, between the, uh, between the town down there and a little hole in the side of the mountain, which I can only assume is the old mine, it wouldn't be the bad, it wouldn't be the worst place for someone to hole up if they got washed out or to hide. So maybe we should check the mine first? I mean, we found some crazy shit in the last mine we were in. You did. I'm sorry. I mean, we could absolutely do that. I'm sure there's probably an old trail over that way. Or I mean, to get to there. From we're, there. we're already here, so we might as well try it. Yeah, it shouldn't take too long to look through the area. It only takes an hour to get up here and Probably takes about 45 minutes to get down. Probably another hour. Yep, we just need to be make sure we'll make it back in the same amount of time that it's taken us to get there. Yeah. Takes about half a day to check this area out and head back. It's, you know. Yeah, it's a little bit before the five day period, but whatever. Rather well, be earlier rather... than late. Exactly. Especially with what's, you know, people already miss him. Exactly. So. Where are you heading to first? Mine. The mine. mine. To the mine. So you head down. Get about halfway down until you actually find a path. That runs perpendicular. It's very clearly an old... Um, cart path to haul things out of nice and flat relatively speaking weather's messed it up a little bit but it's not too bad, <laughs> it's passable and it'll take you kind of in a halo around to it as you approach there are no obvious signs of any activity outside. However, it's turned very much into stone. So any obvious signs would be difficult to find anyway. So, 
you find yourselves at the mouth of a very dark silver cave. Well, not a flashlight. The special one? Yeah, that really big, heavy one. Oh, or just yeah. regular one. Doesn't matter. I'll pass one off and use the regular one. Okay. So you flick on the flashlight and head on in? Yep. We shouldn't go too far in just to make sure so we can still, like, breathe? Yeah, uh, about that. Jack actually pulls a hurricane lantern out from his um, bag. And he lights it and he's like, I'll kind of walk next to the person in front. Okay. Um, and he starts walking next to him. I assume Gladys. It's a bit tight for him. It's not tight for Gladys, and not tight for Edgar, and it's not tight for Rose. You walk down. There are pieces of rail missing. You find a couple old mine carts. It's 50 feet down. Would you like to keep going? Gladys probably would. Is anybody stopping anybody? But Gladys makes bad decisions in non-life or death situations. Okay. Tell me when your characters would want to stop. 100, 200, 300, 400, 500 feet? It goes down quite a ways. Well, Gladys has a specialty in metallurgy, so she's super interested in this mine. Okay. How she's long probably did like it... fingers are along the thing and like actually inspecting it as they go and everything. How long did it take us to reach 50 feet? Not very long. Okay. It's... Everything is short up here. And the only things you had to climb over was an old mine cart that is weather has gotten to it enough that it's not going anywhere anytime soon. Okay. Um, Buttons doesn't know too, too much about mines because I don't do the whole underground thing. Um, Rose would probably start getting a little antsy around 200 feet. I think I'd give it about 150. Okay. So, during that time, can I get intelligence investigation from Gladys? And everyone else, give me wits and awareness. Sure. Six with a crit. Five on a crit. Just a regular five. Okay. So, Gladys, you are inspecting the walls. You do find a very, very couple of very small pieces of what looks to be silver ore. You can kind of pocket those, if you will. Yeah. If you want to. Yeah, if all it takes is a little bit of prying. Yeah. Um... Rose and Edgar, you are heading down. And nothing really catches your eye until that hurricane lantern starts to go from an orangey color to a little bit of a blue like flick here and there. Oh no. <laughs> and about the time about the time you say that he Jake's like what? And he kinda looks nice, like, oh, we probably shouldn't go any further. Just saying. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's, it's methane down there, so... <laughs> a boom. Yeah, I'm aware of what methane does. I learned the hard way. 
Um, it's not necessarily to say that we couldn't go down there, but I'm not going any further. Not we unless we have a real good go reason. Back. Yeah. Okay, so on the way back, can I get everybody to give me an intelligence investigation, please? Since on the way back, you guys can kind of pay a little bit more attention to what's going on around you. I'm getting worried. I roll a five. Okay. I rolled a two, and I'm not going to re-roll it. One. <laughs> so glad I should find another small nugget. Cool. Rose and Edgar, though, you... Have your eyes down a little bit more. And you find something that's out of place. Relatively new folding knife. Looks like it's been worn a little bit, but relatively new. Any engravings on it or anything? No, it just looks like something that you'd get from, like, a general store. Got a nice, maybe, deer antler. Some scales on it. Does have a little bit of serration down at the very bottom to kind of help cut through, like, rope and wood and stuff. Yeah, we got a fairly new knife over here. Well, I mean, we did see the tracks going here, so we know people came this way. Jake kind of walks over and says, like, "Yeah, that." Let me let me take a look at that. Oh, did that belong to anyone that you know of? That's what I'm curious about. He takes it and kind of flips it in hand. Like, yeah, this is Shelly's. <laughs> so they were here. They know better than to like go too far down the mines without having some sort of precaution, though. So, so hopefully so they, they turned around, or are at the very least hold up in the uh, abandoned town, making preparations. That's what I'm hoping. Because yeah. Honestly, hopefully somebody just got hurt and they're just trying to get them some help before they, like, go too far. Yeah. Let's get out of here. Let's get down to that town. Let's figure out what's going on. Sounds like a plan. You are heading out to the mouth of I get one more wits and awareness from everyone. Five. Three. I'll be back. Also three. three. Okay. So everybody does hear as you're about 20 feet away. I'm telling you, I saw somebody go in there. I know I've missed things before, but I saw somebody go down in there. I'm not dumb. Well, I am dumb. But I'm not stupid. Shut up, Taco. Nobody's down there. Pretty sure we'd see some sort of like tracks or something get back to the rest of them. Let them know the false alarm. I'm going to keep quiet so I'm not sure about friendliness. Mm -hmm. So 
dexterity and athletics for those of you that are proceeding forward. I assume Gladys is not. Or dexterity Gladys and stealth. Is, yeah, Gladys is... No, my stealth is pretty good. She'll creep forward. Well, Jake's going to stay there. Hmm. Six. <laughs> Gladys probably trips over her own feet with a two. Five. So you get most of the way out. And then Gladys kicks a rock. And it goes twang off of the rail that's there. And you can hear feet kind of shuffle and stop. What the hell was that? I told you there's something up here. Shut the hell up before I shoot you. Go check it out. Now, can I please get you three when Faye gets back? Hey, what's an awareness, please? Four. Four. Seven with a crit. Yeah, no, you you three don't have any problem knowing exactly where this dude is that the entire time. He gets to the mouth of the cave. He takes a look down in there again. And he doesn't immediately spot anybody. However, it is the guy on the younger side. Looks like he hasn't shaved in a couple months. Real dirty. Looks like he smells bad. Um, however, he has an odd, well, a peculiar outfit on the top is just a plain white t-shirt the bottoms are striped pants horizontally striped black and white you can kind of see him I don't see nothing What do you want me to do? Go down in there a little bit. Maybe. Hide. He pulls out a lighter and he flicks it on. And he starts heading down to the mine. Now, you all are probably about 20 feet in. Just outside of the sunlight like, perimeter. I assume that you turn the flashlight off. The lantern has since been turned off as well. And you can see him proceed down, down, down. Until he comes even with Rose and Edgar. Because Gladys, you're a little bit further back. He kind of stops and he's looking around you. Yeah, I can't see nobody. Then he turns around and heads back up. Just watch him leave. Okay. After he leaves and how long do you wait until you start moving? Yeah, about five minutes before. Just check to make sure no one else tries to fall. Come in. You 
me with an awareness. One more time. Gonna burn a willpower on that one. Four. One. Five. Okay. Do you hang out for a while? Before. All right, I think we're good. And proceed out. Yep. Okay. Once Jake sees like the entrance blocked again, you can hear him start moving up. Um, and as you come out of the mouth of the mine, you wait for everybody to come out. You reconvene. You can kind of see the town from here. Not really. Can't see the guys that were out there, though. Did you see what he was wearing? Yeah. Yeah. We should head back to the base and call for reinforcements, because if there's an issue at the jail, I don't want to deal with it. I agree. Well, the warden said there wasn't an issue with jail. Are you mm -hmm. sure you were talking to the warden? I mean, he had the correct papers and had the correct ID. Well, we just saw an escapee, so... And he was right. talking to someone, so there's more than one out there. Well, I can tell you, neither one of them are the warden that I'm talking to. Well, so there might like, be more. They talked about other people. Yeah. You want to take... Get a little bit closer and use that scope of yours. Take a look. Sure. I'm not saying go in and like mount a rescue mission or nothing, but certainly uh, wouldn't hurt to at least figure out what we're dealing with. Yeah. Yeah, you have a point. You shoot if it's only two or three of them. Depending on what they got, I'd take my chances. Well, we know one of them's armed. So, I'll creep over and see if I can use the scope to get a closer look at what's in town. You're close enough that you can kind of make out some stuff. So go ahead and give me wits and investigation. Okay. See what all you can suss out. Four. Okay, so you do see the vehicle that made the track. Looks like an early form of what is considered a gator. Now, I don't know if any of you know what they actually are. Neat little things. Um, you also see the two people that were up by the mine. They're a good ways back now. You also see two more people. None of them seem to be armed. You do, however, see a pair of binoculars on the one that came down the mine shaft. Um, the other two people, one is on the ground and one is up in a watchtower. Seems like they might be sleeping. Certainly sitting in a chair, leaned up against something. There is no sign of the research team, though. So Rose will creep back over and... Okay, I saw the vehicle. And I can see at least four people. Can't tell offhand if any of them are armed. There's one in a watchtower up the way a ways. 
So we have got a virtual network coming. Yeah, I say we head back and try and talk to this warden. We can do that or try to go through the forest, one of the two. Leaving it up to you, though. I mean, don't don't get me wrong. I really want to go into the town, but we don't actually know how many are there. Mm hmm. That's fair. See, let's let's get back. Have a meeting with the warden that we uh, we talked to, and we'll uh, we'll go from there. Even if we. Go if we even if we do go back to the town, we may be able to know like what these some of the if they escaped from there, like what they were convicted for. If it was something stupid, not a big deal. But you know, if they're like manslaughter, yeah, I mean, that's fair, like I said, whatever you guys want to do, I'm, I'm here for it. I'm just here to kind of help. That's my opinion. I agree. Most likely the best idea. So, making your way back to your previous camp. Yep. And then out to the uh, ranger station. To the vehicle and then back, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So you kind of halo back around and go up and over and back <clears> down. <throat> You've got a couple hours left. You can make your way out of the plains a little bit. Assuming you want to. Yeah. Yep. Watches again or no? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Same order as last time? Yep. But. Okay. So, Edgar? Three. Nothing goes on. Rose. Six. So, a couple things with yours. First and foremost, you see the biggest rabbit you've ever seen in your life. You see one singular rabbit. It is a dark gray. And it seems to pay you absolutely no mind whatsoever. As it jumps right through the middle of your camp. And you swear it's holding like a snake or something in its mouth. And that's relatively early in your watch. And then... Toward the end of your watch. Um, you're kind of sitting there in the dark. And you're looking out in the dark. It's kind of overcast. You swear you hear something. Off in the distance. Kind of sounds like a four-stroke engine, maybe. Like the others. Let them know that I heard an engine revving. Jake will wake up and he'll, he'll listen intently. 
would the other two like to what's in awareness? One. Four. So Edgar and Jake both hear it. Sounds like a large dirt bike motor, maybe. Kind of like the size of what would have been on that weird vehicle. Yeah, I hear it. You don't see any headlights. You don't see any movement. But you definitely hear the thing. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't hear anything. Does it seem like it's getting closer to us? You wait. And it's getting louder. Not like exponentially louder, but it is getting louder. Until probably about ten minutes goes by. And you see lights crest the top of that hill. The top of the mountain. And that Gladys can see. Uh oh. Yeah. Oh. Which, as it sits right now, you're about an hour out from your truck. You've got a pretty good ways out before you had to let it be. And you didn't really stay in that area too long. So you got a pretty good ways back. So would you like to head toward the truck? Yes. Sure. Yes. Okay. So you, first and foremost, I will need a wits and survival from everyone to extinguish the fire properly. Which is the main concern right now. Four. What did Gladys get? Six with the crit. Okay. Also four. So you two just kind of like dump a bunch of water on it and let us like, no, you got to bury it. And Jason's like, oh shit, okay. That, that works. Don't make smoke. And um, at this point, Jake's kind of just grabbing up the stuff that is essential. Not really worried about the tents, not really worried about it a whole heck of a lot. Um, you get the dog, and you get moving. I'm going to need another one from at least one of you. If not let, multiple. Let my good rolls. <laughs> Three. Four again. Can I roll? I've only got four dice. Go for it. Why not? You've been rolling good so far. Three. Scarily good. I'm worried something's going to happen. I can burn one power if I need to. Well, in order to get back to the truck in time, I was putting it at a five because navigating at night's a pain. Especially if you don't really know what's going on. On. And the highest we got was four. I'll bring that little power. Hey, four. Is Rose wanting to burn with her? Attempt to get one more. Yeah, I'll go ahead and risk it for the biscuit. There we go. You got five? I got five. Only five, but I got five. Okay. okay. So you managed to see the truck and you can see the headlights. They're gaining on you. So 
So you get to the truck and kind of staring off. You see this thing just bobbing through. Go to start it and it's a diesel. Kind of cold. Gladys? Yeah? Can I get intelligence and technology or academics, whichever is higher for you? Okay. Intelligence and... They're the same. Okay. <clears throat> Two. Okay. Well, you know enough about diesels that they don't like to start when they're cold. Nope. You might need to give it a little bit of help. How close is that? Well, the fun thing is the air cleaner, where you need to give it that help. It's right outside the passenger window. Right, I was asking how close the bike is. It's gaining fast, but you got a little bit of time. What you thinking, Gladys? Is she going to make a stupid decision? Can she reach it from the inside? The air cleaner? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Oh, we need like a lighter. Or... I, I don't really know what. Kind of. To... It's kind of like what the old lady did. You need to spray a little bit of ether in there, which I'm sure in that bag somewhere you got a little bit. Oh, well, I'm sure she does. So you take it out and you give it a. Tss -tss. And a Starts right up. Smoking like hell. But it starts right up. So, Edgar, I will need a composure and drive, please. I'm not going to lie. I thought for sure Gladys was going to have to get out. No, I'm not going to do that. Yet. Rose would have leaned out the window and covered you. It's fine. Now Gladys would have made a stupid decision and told you to just look, go. <laughs> the girl's gonna burn another willpower. Oh, jeez. Tonight is the night of the willpower. Not for me. Still one. Okay, so you go to back out and you get stuck for half a second. However, you do start moving. Unfortunately, it's not in time before they come up and they thwack the side of the truck. And that's actually what gets you moving. And you spin around and you can clearly see there are four of them. And they're just yelling at all you. Now, who's in the bed of the truck? Because you have a better view. Rose, only one of them has a firearm. Not a very big firearm, either. And they kind of pointed at you, and they pointed at Jake, and they pointed at the dog, and they're like, y'all quit, and y'all stop, and come back with us. Rose immediately brings her rifle around and uh, points it at the one with the gun. All right, so I will need a straight-up dexterity from you, please. Sure thing. Figure out who shoots first? Because he's absolutely going to shoot. You can see it. That's going to be five on a crit. You beat him by one. So go ahead and take your shot. Sure thing. Problem is, is who is he shooting? He would turn to try to shoot Rose. Six. That's enough to... uh put him down. However, he still does get a shot off. I, however, get to roll random. Am I the random? <laughs> What's the dog's name? Vivian. 
Okay. Rip Vim. Um, really, this is a either it hits or it doesn't. Because they were aiming at Rose. They did get a shot off. But it's certainly closest to the dog. So you're just rolling to see if it hits Rose or the dog? No, just the dog. Oh. Now I get to see if the dog dodges it. Dog's fine. The dog is fine. Um, after the first shot, it jumps enough to where it, like, raises. It does a point of damage, but it's definitely not hit by any means in, of the imagination. Uh, when it puts a nice chunk out of the uh, bed of the truck. However, those in the back of the truck can also smell diesel at this point. Diesel doesn't catch fire like that. It's fine. Yeah. Still worrying. Um, and the one driving. Marty, what the hell? As they keep trying to keep pace with you guys. Y'all better back the fuck off before the rest of you end up just like him. Can I get charisma intimidation, please? Mm, not my best, but okay. Look, you just you just shot someone. It's fine. Two. They don't back off. What would Edgar like to do at this particular point? Keep keep going as far as the truck will let him. So as you're going, they're actually keeping pretty decent pace. They don't seem to be backing off, even with Rose pointing the rifle at them. And after a little while, Jake's like, you want something? This is going to be real dumb, but... Let everybody know that if this doesn't work out, I try to be the hero. Jake, don't. What are you doing? And you can see him step on the side of the bed and like jump off onto the thing. Now, here's the fun thing. Jake's a legitimate athlete. He's just not very dexterous. However, this doesn't really require a whole lot of dex. It just requires strength. Gladys has been digging through her bag for something to use as shrapnel during this time. I assume you've started making a homemade explosive. Um, Jake jumps off and you can see him land perfectly as if he were to be like a professional wrestler or something. Just clothesline the driver. And the little four stroke thing you know, swerves off to the side and you kind of see it flip. You guys keep driving. Take or stop the car. <laughs> stop the car for Jake. <laughs> um, do you back up? Or do you just kind of wait there? We'll back up a bit. Okay. So you back up a bit, and as you're backing up, you can hear it. Not too far. Rose, you can actually see it's one of the prisoners. <laughs> escapees kind of lay in there and you can see the uh, whatever it is kind of off in the bushes it's still running it's upside down though there was four prisoners one is on the ground one got shot so that leaves two unaccounted for as well as your offensive lineman. Where can we see him somewhere? Anywhere? Hear uh, him scuffling with someone? Not from where you're at right now. The engine and the person are kind of a little bit too loud. Half made bomb in her hand. Gladys is jumping out and heading towards that ATV thing or the uh, yeah. gator thing. 
Okay, so you go around and there ain't nobody in it. It's just running. And it is just wide open, too. Turn it off. Just then you can hear a thwack, thwack, thwack. And a... Look towards the noise. As you come up on the noise, Jake is just like on top of this guy. Just I told you, stop moving. Jake, keep him alive. We probably should question him. I'm just hitting the shoulder. It's fine. Just avoid the face. Squirming. Yeah, he just keeps squirming him. It's fine. Where's the other one? I don't know. Edgar left the truck. So. I need wits and awareness. Please. Four. Five. Four. <clears throat> okay. Well. I have bad news. Is our truck gone? No, the truck's still there. It's not going anywhere. However, the person that is being targeted by this does not get a roll. And guess who's being targeted by it? Me! Yes. <laughs> I knew I something did. was going to happen. I rolled, and I rolled a two, and I go It's by... fine. It's fine. So. I, I knew something was going to happen. So... Gladys. Bangles. You feel a very sharp pain in your back. Okay. You How take, sharp of a pain? You take four aggravated damage. You are not dead. He drops. I know. I rolled exactly four. So. I have exactly four. Oh, I know. And it's a sharp object, which makes aggravated damage on Morpheus. However, he kind of keeps you up in like a headlock and he's like, I will end her if y'all don't put shit down and let me take the truck and leave. Can I get a headshot off on him? Well, you can certainly try. Would Edgar also like to try? Because I assume that you have taken your rifle with you out in the truck. Also, where is the dog? Dog is probably in the truck right now. Unless it jumped out to follow us. Not without a command. You all left it in the truck. I assume since Edgar was probably right behind Gladys, so he'll probably just keep his hands up just because he knows the guy can see him. Okay, so Rose. You will take a two die penalty. Okay. Because called, called shot, shot and he has cover. Yes. If you roll badly, you will hit Gladys. I still and got a I still got a pretty good pool, even with that penalty, so I'm confident. Okay. And Gladys will die if you roll badly. Just giving you that consequence right out there. I'm confident in my abilities. One of the for one of the few times I am. Seven on a crit. You pull up and he's like, I swear to you I will do it. And the second he says do it, you pull the trigger and just on each glad as you fall to the ground. You're covered in blood, but it's not all your own blood. Edgar is going to immediately tend to Gladys. 
you He's know probably the only one. Only other one who has a dot in medicine. I will say that you know enough to not take the knife out immediately. However, go ahead and roll that, please. I will allow you to either intelligence or wits, whatever is better for you. Both are the same. Okay. I'm going to burn one more willpower. No better, still one. Um. So, Gladys, it's not that Edgar does a bad job, he just doesn't do a good job. Your condition doesn't improve. You are muted. Is she still conscious? Because she hit four and fucking dropped. Um, you are kind of in and out right now. Okay. So you are left with Jake, two prisoners, Rose, and Edgar, and an unconscious, semi-conscious class. How would you like to handle the situation? Take her to the truck. Jake, can you help carry her? I'm going to take these two idiots. Okay. That works. Uh, probably would do well not to lay her on her back, though. That looks like it hurts. Um, isn't the tank leaking, though? Little. Let's hope we can get it back. Can we patch job it? I might be able to do something. And as you are loading her up, he kind of hog ties the other two. One's actually, they're both pretty pliable at this point. <laughs> and Jake will, as I put on his sheet, redneck it. He has free reign of Gladys's bag. She's got a, a little welder in there. I say little, but you know. You want he does. to weld a leaking tank shot? I'm just saying. He wants all the water blaze like of glory. Diesel doesn't go boom like that. Gas doesn't go boom like that, actually. Um, but he does something. He thinks that he might have like slowed it down. He definitely didn't stop it. But he thinks he might have slowed it down. And you get everybody in the truck and he kind of sits in the back with Gladys. As you drive back now, Edgar, is your wits or your intelligence better? Both three. Okay. So that and drive. So you know well enough how to conserve as much fuel as you physically can. And you barely make it back to the ranger station before it just goes pop, 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 and just dies. Tank is on E. There's nothing Lattice left. is on E. Lattice is not doing well. So much so that um, Bay, mm -hmm. I know Gladys is. I know Gladys's stamina is not very good. It's my one dot. Yep. Can I get? Would you like me to roll it? Stamina and resolve, please. <clears throat> one. Edgar, can I get intelligence and medicine, please? Two. She needs to get seen at the closest medical facility physically possible. She's not doing good. Mm. 
We're just not going to waste any. We we have two vehicles, right? Yes. The guy's not wasting any time. He's lo immediately loading her into the other one. Okay. Does Rose stay with the prisoners, or does she go with? Rose does... will stay with the Rose will stay with the prisoners. She trusts Edgar to get Gladys, and um, she doesn't want to. She doesn't want to leave them with Eugene. Okay. So the girl will also command the dog to stay with uh, Rose. So, Edgar, can I get composure and drive? I don't think your composure is super great, but composure absolutely fits in this particular situation. Nothing. Do you have any willpower to spend? Yep, one more. I would suggest that you spend it. One. That's good enough to not crash on the way there. But you head to the penitentiary. Because that is the closest thing that you know of. Gladys, I need that roll again, please. All four successes. So you make it there and <laughs> take her inside and immediately like, I don't give a damn what you gotta do, just make sure she doesn't, like, die. And they're like, what do you, oh god. Grab her immediately <laughs> into the infirmary. About an hour goes by, and this little short fat guy, gray hair, bald on top. <laughs> it's like, I'm I'm sorry, I'd... I got a call saying that we had somebody drop somebody off. Are you the person that dropped somebody off? Yeah. What, uh, what happened? We ran into some escaped prisoners, like, tried to chase us down, and one of them stabbed her. Do you know any of their names? No, but we do have two of them at the ranger station. Uh, I was... Let's so keep this in-house. I'm the warden here. It would seem that you found our escaped convicts. Trying to keep it hush-hush before we let people know taking care of it ourselves. Uh, where? Which ranger station? Edgar will get the location. By where the researchers went missing. Yeah. Well, good news is they probably are still alive. Bad news. Some of them might be a little worse for wear. You know, speaking of, the two of the prisoners are a little worse from her, where they're, they're dead. I would assume that they, that was self-defense. Yeah. That's what I'll chalk it up to. One of them got a hold of a revolver when they left, so we knew that they were armed. Part of the reason why we didn't want to like, alert anybody, because tell people out here that you got an armed escapee, they're all going to go out try to shoot somebody um all right first and foremost let's get into my truck and we'll head down there we'll get everybody taken care of we'll get some deputies and get them back we'll figure out what went on tomorrow though okay You 
hop in a truck. And you head back down there. It's like that middle night still. By the time you get back, the sun's starting to rise. And Rose, you see this random truck that you ain't never seen before. A little short, fat old guy jumps out. And Jake's still kind of sitting on top of one of the prisoners. Every once in a while, just kind of like smacks him out of habit. Rose will Borden. grab a rifle. Rose will head out and meet them, rifle still on her shoulder. Edgar, you jump out as well. And Jake kind of grabs both of them up by the scrap of well, what's left of their shirts. <coughs> kind of drags them over. It's like, I think we found your uh, people. Everything was fine. Yeah, apologize about that. Kind of explain the situation to him. It's unfortunate that you guys had to find that. Well, find them. The one that stabbed her is dead. That's not going to be an issue, is it? Do you know which one it was? Didn't get a name. We'll figure out which one it was. There was one that probably better to have uh, not quite made it out than the rest of them. Uh, I heard them, did hear them yell I think it was the one with the gun named Marty? Yeah, that was their ringleader. Uh, he's the other one that's no longer with us. Well, that's unfortunate. He was only in for petty theft. And we had two for counterfeit and fraud. One for aggravated assault. Had a little bit longer rap sheet than that. That's just what we got him on. In any case, um, I got some deputies coming. They'll be out here in a little bit. Let's go inside and figure out what our next steps are. And by this point, Eugene's already like come out and figured out like what all was going on and all that stuff. So he's he's all caught up. And within a couple minutes, deputies show up. They grab the two guys and haul them off. Another one hangs around and kind of gets statements and goes to investigate the scene. It's to the wee hours of the morning. By that time, the warden's like, well, we should probably get back. Um, I do have an update for your friend, by the way. Or at least last I knew They're going to lose a kidney, but otherwise, it'll be fine. They should eventually be fully recovered. That's good, at least. We appreciate it. Also, uh, just to let you know, the... I assume the one that stabbed your friend was the one that uh, we got him on aggravated assault, but suspected of about six murders. As well as some not very wholesome acts against other types of people. So, it's a piece of work. Deputy's going to head back out. He's going to go check out that town, see what he can find. We appreciate what you did. Thanks. 
careful up in the if you go check out the mine there's still some methane back there about yeah, 150 no. 200 feet in no nah, we're not going anywhere near that place it's supposed to be cursed how so local legend hmm. something about the uh ground eater or something pretty sure it's just these methane pockets explode and swallow the earth makes sense but in any case um, I would say that you're welcome to come to up to the jail but it's not going to be any more comfortable than this we can at least provide you some reading material so you have something to do. Lunar to put down there. Glad I shouldn't be alone. You're more than welcome to hop in with me and we'll head back. Mm -hmm. As far as you two are concerned, we'll get you some gas out here and just fix up that truck, okay? Jake's like, yeah, I'll probably be able to actually fix it with more than a couple minutes to spare. Glad to hear that Gladys is okay, though. Quick side note, while she was waiting for uh, Edgar to return, um, Rose would have made it a point to tell Eugene about the huge fucking rabbit she saw the other night just before everything went went downhill. You can see his eyes go about yay big around. And he's like, now you know that I've got to find one of these things, right? <clears throat> I'd say be careful if it can, if it can hunt snakes. It's got some cleverness to it. Snakes are dumb, though. Yeah, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time out here, but I'll see what I can find. Careful. And I am going to make that roll for Eugene. He is unsuccessful. I hope Eugene but, finds this fucking rabbit. <laughs> no. No, he does not. Um, but... You make it back to the jail, and a couple hours later, you hear word that all of the research team are a little bit worse for wear, but they're all alive. Found them in the town. Tied up, they're dehydrated, they're a little bit malnourished. A couple of them are a little bit worse off than the others. But, all things considered... Good to find him. Everybody eventually shows up at the jail and gets packed up. You two are allowed to stay a little bit longer to wait for Gladys to be in traveling form if you want. Because Gladys will be off her feet for at least a week. In that time, Gladys should wake up in a jail hospital. She's freaking out quite a bit. But Rose and Edgar are there, so that's that's the positive part, right? Yeah. How are you feeling? Wow, what a first question. Just giving him a are you shitting me look. It's a courtesy question. I feel like I got stabbed in the back. She's probably high off her ass on pain medicine, too. Oh, yeah. Well, that's because he did. <laughs> Looking like three feet over. <laughs> that's because he did. Oh, 
No, is that any way to thank the person who saved your ass? I don't know what happened. I shot his brains out is what happened. He stuck a knife in you, I got pissed, so I shot him. I want to go home. We're working on it. Gotta heal up again. a little bit. <laughs> And that happens a couple times in the next couple days. You have been told specifically, do not fly in an airplane. So you'll have to drive back. However, it just so happens that the jail has an old truck for sale. Got a bench in the back that you can lay down in. And in the front. It's actually fairly comfortable. A little bit bigger than your other ones. Kind of like the one that you had up in uh, Washington. <laughs> Almost exactly. Well, fuck this one up, Edgar. Uh, hopefully we don't. I, mean, I have no plans of going off roading on this, especially it's... in air condition. And I can't fix it right now. I'm sure you actually could. Even in air condition. And you make your way back. Taking your time. Taking it nice and easy and slow. And <clears throat> drive the smoothest road you can the entire way back. And eventually, you get back to Tennessee. Where you are met by Opie. Which immediately hands you his version of painkillers. Um, Evelyn, which goes to hug Gladys and thinks about it. And says, well, I'm happy that you're okay, sort of. Friendly pat on the shoulder will work. Yeah. And Eugene's there. And he's like, I... Once you get better, a little bit less foggy-headed, mm -hmm. I think I might have figured something out. Uh, we'll, we'll get to that when we get to it. I want to go sleep for a week. Yeah, go lay down. The yeah. best thing for you right now. And Gladys is not on bed rest, however, is on extremely light duty <clears throat> for the next month. In the meantime, it leaves Rose and Edgar and Opie. I know. Smokey. Smoke. I was going to say, I don't, what did I don't Opie know. Come? I don't know. <laughs> right place that you picked him up at. Wrong, wrong person. Um, Smokey. <laughs> to run the shop. And during that time, less fires have been set. Less random tangents have went down. Direct activity isn't really any higher. However, free works and extra work is went down. Because Gladys isn't in there to get curious. Like I said, eventually when Gladys comes off of extremely light duty, Eugene produces a hypothesis to her. Mm -hmm. And it's a hypothesis on some of the experiments that they've been doing. Ooh. On how to potentially harness some of the power that, that there is. 
And I will All cover right. that with you privately because it's actually kind of convoluted. Okay. Um, now, during that time, is there anything Rose and Edgar would like to do? Rose will uh, actually spend a little bit of time, like, actually at her place of residence, make sure nothing has been dropped off or no one has dropped in. Um, you do actually have a letter that has been slipped under the door. No postmark, no name on it. But when you open it up, it's very obvious as to who wrote it. I understand that you had a visitor not too long ago. I'm surprised she left, went and saw you without my permission. Know that this is the last time that that will happen without consequences for her. If you see her again, I would highly encourage you to tell her to go away and no longer speak to you. Your best friend. And we'll leave it as that. Rose will immediately burn the letter. Okay. Edgar, in between working at the shop, would probably spend... More time in Rose's library. Okay. Just picking up random things and reading them. Yep. So you do that. Now, Gladys, in your time on Extremely Light Duty, what would you like to do? Between he... pain medicine induced cases. He has those blueprints that she was given. Yes. She can't probably make any of it, but she can probably start gathering and making sure she has the materials for a prototype and figuring right. out everything that she would need to do. Yes. And then, like, checking over things like 80 times to make sure she did it right in her medicated state. So I will actually allow you to roll here. <laughs> Intelligence and craft with a one die penalty. Okay. Just for how thorough you actually are. And that's also taking into account your specialty. Yeah. Not too bad. I got one, two, three, four, five. Five. So you have all of the materials. Obviously, you haven't started on it. But you definitely have all the materials. You checked your list. You checked it twice. You checked it three times. You checked it seven times. Made smoke. You check it. <laughs> Made smoke. You check it. And you've started to do some of the light work, putting fittings together, putting the actual canister together, making the actual delivery system. And you've tested it with water and throwing it a piece of cloth or something. And when it jars, it lets go and it starts leaking the water out. It's not very fast. You can probably up the poundage on the spring. But in theory, it works. Cool. Granted, every time you throw it, it kind of hurts a little bit, so you don't move very often. Right. He makes Rose do it. <laughs> yeah. After the uh, first time, it was, ha! Ah! <laughs> that hurt a lot more than I thought it would. Rose would gladly <laughs> lend her throwing arm. <laughs> so, we will leave our cell here.
I hope everybody had fun. Yes. <clears throat> it was interesting. Yeah. Like I said, it wasn't the most dangerous thing you've ever dealt with. And yet it was the one where we came closest to death. I was going to say, excuse me? <laughs> I mean, I've had multiple of you at like one or two health boxes left before, so... I we only had also, the one person. I think that's also the most. I think that's also the most willpower we have spent collectively <laughs> in the game. Yes. I only spent one in the beginning. Thank you. I spent four <laughs> out of six. My willpower wasn't even spent during when our like actual game was going. Yeah, because you just kept rolling ridiculous. I knew something was going to happen. I yeah. knew it. The second I rolled that and I saw it too, I was like, really? <laughs> one That's time you couldn't, just, you couldn't just let her have one, really? Nope. But yeah, no. Um, yeah. So, some announcements. To get through those real quick. Um, we appreciate you for anybody that is going to be watching us and has watched us and is still with us. Um, catch us on Sundays and Tuesdays at the absolute least. Um, upcoming Sunday is... Uh, are you going to be running that or no? I know your schedule for next week is kind of... The 11th were set for above the table. Yeah. Which... Um, might I if I can get things ready in time, maybe. Okay. So there might be something special on Sunday. Um next Tuesday, however, is Blood and Hope Detroit. And that should be fun. That'll be with the normal cast. Will Sorry, you be included. able to will you be able to join that one buttons? Uh Tuesday I should be able to, yes. Okay. Hopefully that'll be hopefully that'll be the normal thing. Put it that way. And if it isn't, we'll just be down to buttons, but we've had some family stuff come up and maybe taking a little bit of time off, unfortunately. So um, beyond that, check our link tree for all of our stuff. Our socials, our YouTube, Twitch, Discord, all of that fun stuff. Patreon if that's something that you want to do. Um, and like, follow, subscribe, share, tell everybody and their mother to come see us. Um, so yeah, am I missing anything? No. So stick around for upcoming plans, spoilers. And where we're going next time. Doop. So if you don't want us to have any of that, now's your time to leave. So, um, that was a little bit different, wasn't it? Yeah. That was intense. Yeah, the end there was a little bit more intense than I had planned for. Probably bring up Edgar's Muslim. Huh? So I should probably bring up Edgar's Muslim. I'm gonna have to rewatch this just to see my face when I realize it was for aggravated damage. <laughs> yeah. That's why I looked at it and I looked at that and I looked at that and I looked at that and I was like, shit. Because <laughs> I, I know how much health you got and I'm pretty sure I know how much health they have. And, like, I genuinely was like, do I want... I don't want to, like, reduce this. But I've already made the precedent that if you go to zero, and it's exactly zero, you're not dead. Right. So, at least that's the good part. <clears throat> yes. So, yeah, that was, uh... A thing. Quick question for you. Any bonus experience from this one? So, you will get two. Two there additional... Was... 
Yes. There was a possibility of four. One of what them was... Miss? One of them was return all of the prisoners alive. Which obviously didn't happen. Um, the other one... There was... Something as you guys were in the mines that you could have found. Uh, you rolled well. But not well enough. I rolled there. like seven with a crit. What did we have to roll? Right. You were looking specifically at the walls for silver, though. What? Where? On the I? way back. On the way back, I was going to let you see it. If you would have. And that was a little bit worse. There was a little bit bigger chunk of it. So. Not a big deal. No, you got the majority of the silver, which is also a bonus because you can actually use that to craft into like anti werewolf weapons. Yes. So that's a bonus. So, no, you didn't get the experience, but you still got the good part. Yeah, of no, it. I was just curious. Yeah, which, if anybody's curious, that is good for if you want to make it into crossbow tips, it's good for three of them. Okay. If you want to make it into bullets, it's good for 12. If you want to make it into like that Quicksilver mix, it's good for 20. But you found the knife, which led you to believe that there was somebody part of the people there and you didn't get jumped by the people in the mine which was the two that you got had you rolled one more or had you rolled a little bit better on the first one which I know is ridiculous but still had you rolled a little better I just would have given you everything I don't think I could have rolled better. Okay. Unless I had gotten another set of crits. Yeah. But also, yeah, no, if your compatriots have rolled better. Jeez. Not putting it all on glads tonight. I know. <laughs> but yeah. Um, the one that Stabbed Rose was the real bad one. You mean Gladys? Gladys? Yeah, Gladys. I do that every freaking time, at least you once. Do. You do. But yeah, the one that stabbed Gladys was the real <clears throat> bad one. Good. If Rose had no qualms about shooting him before, she definitely doesn't now. Yeah. Um... But yeah. Any other questions about this one? I know it's pretty open and shut. And by the way, it, the rabbits weren't actually unique. They were just huge because there wasn't a whole lot that actually could like take them down. I they figured lots they lots were good... figured some um, words. Jesus Christ, some big old jackrabbit mixes. Pretty much, yeah. I've had one of those before. This fucker was massive. Went from, like, yeah. shoulder to hip, from, like, its shoulders to its butt was from my shoulder to opposite hip. Yeah, so size of a medium-sized dog. Yeah. Yeah. It was a jackrabbit mix. Um... And by the way, rabbits will actually kill snakes. Yes. They'll eat that shit. Yeah. So that's a fun fun little factoid if you didn't know. Yep, they'll hop yeah. on them to break the necks. Yep. So, I think. Either that or kick them. 
I think it's just maybe kick them. But every once in a while, they'll actually like play with them after they've done that. Yeah. Which which saw. And like I said, it, it gave zero shits. It was like, all right, cool people. Just jump on <laughs> through. If you don't lure in prey fear, then you don't have it. Exactly. Yeah, no, I don't really have any questions about this game other than what we're going to talk about. Or, I guess, those two things that we're going to talk about. Yep. Would you like to share with the rest of the group what one nah. of them... Nah. Okay. How about the other one? Nah. Nah? Okay. <laughs> so, who wants to make that roll? Uh, what's the roll? D50? And then go ahead, you've got the dice right there. Four six. South Carolina. I don't remember what is there. What is in the Carolinas? Um, Charleston. Yeah, actually, that's where you're going to be going. <laughs> that area. That general area is actually where you're going to be going. So that's fine. Haunted plantation. No. Mm. I'm sorry. It's not that cool. Arn. Will this tie into our Charleston game? No, however, there will be Easter eggs. Um, it is labeled as Lizard Ben. Oh boy. Interesting. And Stephen, I like this one. <laughs> Potentially, yeah. So yeah, that that'll be fun. That might be another one and done one though. Not a bad thing when we have those though. This one was kind of fun. It was fun. Mm -hmm. Stressful, but fun. If I do my job right, everything is stressful, <laughs> yet still fun. It's kind of like Sunday. That was stressful. This Sunday fun. was so much fun. Like I said, stressful. I will give you a little bit of a heads up. Sunday is kind of going to be a de-stressor day. Things will happen, things will move forward, but other than buttons, <laughs> things will be okay. Okay. Um, like, things will happen, you can, and all of that, but... It's a fairly chill hangout with Leon night. Oh, man. I'll miss my favorite NPC, dang it. What? You said you can be there Tuesday. Oh, Tuesday. I thought you said I, I still registered that oh, as you talking about Sunday. No, no, no. Sunday. So I'll I'll give you a heads up for Sunday. And I'm not 100% sure if I will have it ready in time. Because I've... Um, while I have Saturday off, I don't have a whole lot of time throughout from then to now anymore. Um, I'm going to attempt to see if I can have a thing ready so you guys can delve into Cat's past in a memoriam type situation. Oh, cool. 
and we'll learn some more about Vincent. Yeah. Maybe. I'm going to try. I call Shadow Lords. <laughs> I, I joke, obviously. We'll, we'll figure out characters and all that stuff and, like, the how, but I, th I thought that'd be an interesting one-shot. Yes. And you've been running all of the one-shots, so I would like to try and give you another game to play. Okay. Yeah. I'm down for it. Yeah, I'm down for it. Either way. So, yeah. Anybody have anything else that they would like to talk about? This game, that game, next game. Price of gas. Everyone else finally knows the dog's name. Yeah. So I had a name picked up since I got it. No one asked. Why would Gladys uh, ask? She hates the damn thing. Which I rolled on a dice that time too. And I went through alphabetically and I was like, of course it has to be the last one, right? Okay, so is it, does it hit yet? Yeah, it's son of a bitch. Okay, how how much does it hurt? hit? Not that much. Okay, cool. So one per one, very minor damage. That's fine. But, uh, it's fine. I was hoping that Gladys would have made it through that so she could have fixed the gas tank too. But no. Uh, no, I just had to go get stabbed in the back for four aggravated damage. Oh, darn. I know. It was definitely my fault. Well, I was hoping that somebody else I had two options here. Would have seen this dude sneak it up on you. I nah, thought they were just going to take well. the truck. No, because. Knew that the dog was in the back of the truck. <laughs> the plan was. Get a hostage. Get one of you two to grab the dog. Take the truck and leave. That was the plan. Obviously, the plan did not work. Obviously, the plan kind of went just like the guy's head. Yeah. <laughs> and the stabbed Rose's uh, co-worker. Oh, yeah. wow, not even friend, co-worker. <laughs> I mean, there's worse things that could be said about her. could just be acquaintance I think co-worker's worse no co-worker co means that Rose is willing to work with you guys and trust you enough to watch her back I the, oh see I don't trust you are any of my co-workers like that she doesn't She's not going to divulge like intimate details of her tragic backstory or anything but she trust you guys not to stab her in the back while we're trying to defend ourselves from other people. That's fair. Gladys never even told any of you her real name, so you know. You know what's you know you know what's really funny? What's really funny to me is um First meeting out, the Baron told Rose to look into Gladys's real name and said she just fucked off and didn't. Yep. <laughs> Is that gonna be something you do now? No. <laughs> not until you give Rose a reason to care about it. She's not gonna do it just because the Baron said to. Yeah. <clears throat> oh man, none of you guys even told Gareth. Well, I survived. It's fine. He expects it at this point.
Still not even a that's rough, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean we I've probably would have we probably would have given him a heads up if it was like a, a a missing limb or like a super grievous injury that was gonna like really, really, really take it out of Gladys, but I'm sorry, a, a super super grievous injury, like she would have died if I hadn't rolled a four that last time. Yeah, had yep. I not rolled that, she was going to die. Yep. <laughs> Wonderful. That's why I rolled it like I did. Yeah, the uh the one made the second roll necessary. It wasn't a zero. But it wasn't a pass. Yeah, had I not rolled a two or a three, she was going to die. And I only had four dice to roll. So if anybody is curious how I am doing that with mortals, if you get to exactly zero, you have stamina and resolve, number of rounds, Unless if somebody stabilizes you. Or number of rolls. But you kind of determine whatever it is. Um, up to your stamina modifier of negative wins. So like if you set it at two, which I did. Which is pretty much where I'm going to set it. Um, and you roll a one, it's minus one, minus two. This would be zero. Not super hard to win, assuming you don't have one stamina. Now, if you have a one stamina or two stamina, you get up to that, and then the next failure, next negative roll that you get after that would be you die. So Edgar would have three, right? For stamina and resolve? No, just stamina. Edgar has two, I think. You have two. Rose also has two. Rose has three stamina. Okay, I have you two backwards. So Edgar would have up to negative three. So you could roll zero on the first one. As long as you didn't roll zero again, you're fine. Or you didn't fail again, you're fine. But you'd have to win twice. Rose, you could roll zero and then one and still be alive however you would have to win twice back to back Gladys you get negative one and then two is to make sure that you don't have to roll again or to make sure that you just don't die Yeah. four actually got you to a point that you actually didn't need medical attention Because you made it back plus one. So. I mean, I did need medical attention, but not right. immediately going to die medical attention. Yeah. Miraculously blood clotted. And is no longer bleeding out. So yeah, it's kind of a weird way to do that, but I didn't see any rules for it. So. That's fine. I just came up with it. It works. Yep, it does indeed. So. It just works. And it hey, makes Tom sense. Howard. And it makes somewhat sense. <laughs> so, anyway, I don't have anything else. Nobody else has anything else. We are mm -hmm. good to go, and we appreciate anybody that is still with us or has watched us to this point. We hope that you have a safe and happy until next Wait. time we see you which hopefully is the next time we are on so have a good night have a good Stay one safe. goodbye